It's the Jason Bell Podcast, everybody. Thank you very much. Listen, wherever you are, whatever you're up to, uh, while you listen to this episode, thank you for your company. Uh, if you're new to the podcast, first of all, where on earth have you been? <laughs> I mean, if this is your first time joining us, then you've missed quite a bit, if I'm honest. Well, I say you've missed it. You can, of course, listen to any of the previous seasons or episodes anytime. Now, just to give you a little flavor of what you've missed, truly inspirational talks and some genuinely hilarious conversations with some people that you may or may not know. Lorraine Kelly, of course, Paul McKenna. I'm Paul McKenna, looking to my eyes. The very, very inspirational Katie Piper, one of the most moving, I think, interviews I've ever done. Chris Moyles, the most hilarious podcast I have ever done. Tommy Mallett, what an amazing, inspirational young man he is. The one and only Beverly Knight, Jenny Faulkner, Ian Marber, Del Pinnett, the Speakmans. It just goes on and on and on. However, however... Today, it is all about someone else. Yes, indeed. It's all about the guest today who first hit our screens back in 2011 on a reality TV show on MTV. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, she's gone on to write two novels, an autobiography. She even won I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, won it, no less. Mm -hmm. She's been a panelist on Loose Women. She's an ambassador for WW. And more recently, I was noticing during lockdown, I saw her and a lovely fella packing some care packages for the elderly and raised a bunch of cash in the process too. Uh, she also currently, and I think it's worth a mention, she also currently has almost 5 million <laughs> followers on Instagram. I can, of course, only be talking about the second most famous Patterson after the best-selling author, James himself. <laughs> yes, it's Vicky Patterson, everybody, come on. Let's get it for like, I almost feel embarrassed after that introduction. It was a, so I'll nice. i tell you what, it's a great intro. i tell you what, I'm going to bring you back down to earth then straight away. First of all, thank you for being on as well. I'm obviously in a different country. This is what I love about technology, recording this as we go. And we're in the middle of lockdown still. So we're going to on talk about that in a second. But to bring you back down to earth, as I was looking for your namesake, who is the most famous Patterson? And there's quite, there's quite a few. I mean, oh. there's, there's Floyd Patterson, of course, who was an American professional boxer who competed. Yeah. There's Pat Patterson, there's Simon Patterson, Carly Patterson, there's Gary Patterson. There's quite a few that, you, that you're there with. Um, but James Patterson stood out more than anything right. else. Now, you've written a couple of books and an autobiography. Let me give you lots of little stats on James. He sold 300 million books. <laughs> now, yeah. now, I'm unsure how well your books have done, Vicky, <laughs> but, but I, I think don't, I was second. I think I just came after him. Just you, like, I'm just really glad that there isn't another Vale writing books. Quite frankly, otherwise oh. I, I could never compete with that. He was the first person, to, a million ebooks, first person to ever do that. Anyway, we're not going to talk about James. We're going to talk about the one and only Vicky Patterson. Actually, Vicky, you've been on my podcast before, but you don't know it. What the hell? Yeah, I know. Weird, hey. You sneaky weasel! How could well, I wasn't that sneaky. It just proves that your memory is as good as mine. <laughs> so was this we when were, we did the interview for the mag yeah so we were at juicy oh. oasis so juicy oasis the health retreat in the center of portugal vicky came over there with her mom many years ago been back several times since but we started recording an interview it was going in my magazine but at the same time i thought i'd do the audio and then we can also get i can start a podcast i never had a podcast at the time that <laughs> that audio was completely lost <laughs> no <laughs> yeah, so do you know what though i also recorded gary barlow that was gone Oh, I know, what? I know, there you go. But anyway, it is what it is. But we are where we are now, and obviously that would be uh, dated now. So look, Juicy Oasis holds a special place in your heart. But why is that? What do you think? What do you think there is about, what, what is it about the place? So everyone who follows me on Instagram will know how much I wax lyrically about Juicy Oasis. And it is one of my favourite places in the world. I'm really honest about that. I think... We, we all, everybody knows this. We, we work so hard. We work a million miles an hour. Our lives are fast paced. We very rarely get a moment to take an introspective look at ourselves, to take our foot off the gas, so to speak, and just relax and rest and do things that our soul really needs. So like a couple of times a year, I make sure I take myself off to Juicy Oasis out in Portugal. And I just totally relax, recharge, reset, take a look of my life, work out what I like about what I'm doing, maybe it's what I don't. I use it to totally reflect and nourish my mind, body and soul when I'm there. And there's just this amazing feeling about the place. Like the second I step in the door from the wonderful welcoming staff to like the whole vibe, the juicing, the exercising, the beautiful landscape. I mean, Jason's saying it's not 
the most luxurious place. Obviously, he has lived better life than me, but no. <laughs> I think it's five star luxury. Like, this place is just incredible, and it's it's the best thing I do all year. For- but of course, as you've said many, many times before, because some people on Instagram misunderstand and they say, oh, it's, a, it's about weight loss and you shouldn't live on juice and they, and they attack. They're in the minority, but they do. And then you put them right, obviously, because <laughs> it, isn't, it isn't about the, the juice for you. It's about, it's this place. It's about, like you said, stepping back, reflecting and nourishing weirdly your mind yeah, o- almost, almost uh-huh. the same as your body anyway. And this is what often people don't realize. When I was writing some of the questions down, I thought, you know, we're going to talk about Juicy Oasis. And I, then I started looking at your history. Not only were you in the jungle in Australia, I'm a celebrity, get me out of it, but you won no less. Now, <laughs> in order to win, it's, it's an enormous feat, first of all. But what was the worst thing you ate? <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. So get on this, like you being the juice master yourself, well, we'll appreciate this one. I, I, I ate a whole heap of stuff, but probably the, the thing that stays with me to this day was I drank blended camel penis. It was called a Schlong Island iced tea. <laughs> A Long Island iced tea. That's correct. And it's what a blend, a blended what camel penis. Blended camel penis. Yeah. Why have I not done that? I, I, I don't really, know why your recipe book's missing it, Jim. The time of recording, actually, I'm on L- Lorraine this Friday. Oh. But I think, well, they're looking for ideas. Well, there you go. Give the people what they're asking for, Jess. This is what it. they want. It's a blended camel penis, hmm. and dare I even ask? what it tasted like i'm gonna go with grainy <laughs> i don't even know what to say to that to be honest do you know what though i tell you what three i, I mean most people three days into juicy oasis with only juice they would probably love it i mean who knows <laughs> they'd certainly love some you grubs that's for sure they'd probably eat some you grubs on route say at least listen everybody had great intentions right so lockdown came in they thought right okay turn your lemons into lemonade right, what's the best thing we can do? So at the beginning of this, most people say, right, here's what I'm going to learn a language. I'm going to write a book. Mm. I'm going to slim down. I'm going to, you know, do Joe Wicks every day. Nobody really did. Uh, They pretended to. I'm going to do that, whatever it is. You know what I mean? They just went on this thing where they're going, I mean, come on, let's be honest. I mean, a few few kids jumped around on a Friday in a costume. But but, 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 but a lot of them, a lot of people think so. Everyone's both. Well, you've got the truth. You can't handle the truth. The thing is, we all have good intentions. So my question, bear in mind, three quarters of, of, of the people that are coming out of lockdown are heavier than when they went in. Three quarters. How's your diet and fitness been during lockdown? I mean, you're, the, you're, this is a passion of yours anyway, so I wouldn't have imagined it's gone too far the other way. I think, God, those statistics do not surprise me at all. I'm the average woman and I can totally relate. Like, when I first went into lockdown, I was like, oh my God, I am going to be fluent in Spanish. I'm going to be playing the cello. I'm going to have started a side <laughs> hustle. Like, just watch me grow and evolve and become the best version of myself in front of everyone's eyes. And of course, like, I go to bed with all these great intentions every night, like an abundance of brilliant ideas about how I'm going to work out and drink green juice and give birth to an avocado. <laughs> and then by 11 a.m. the next morning, I'm balls deep in a family bag of Maltesers just watching <laughs> Joe Wicks prance about on the telly. Like, this is hard. <laughs> yeah, it is true. I mean, everybody thinks that all I do is live on nothing but juice as well. And the challenge is, even during lockdown, there's going to be times when you just think, do you know what? Because I think it highlighted the fact that ultimately we're not in control of anything. I think that's what lockdown really showed me. Anyway, I've been on this planet 51 years and I thought we had some control to some degree, but we didn't have, but we have no control. We have no control over anything. So I think we suddenly realized, I don't, they could literally pull the rug from us at any given point to do anything. So I think a lot of people went, do you know what? Let's go and grab a glass of wine tonight. Let's go. Well, I say a glass of wine, alcohol consumption has gone through the roof. And, <laughs> I mean, it, it is quite extraordinary. I mean, I know that because one of your things is because you posted earlier this year, big goals for 2020. And it's interesting because everybody had big vision, 2020 vision. And of course, no one, no one saw this coming. Oh, nobody, I know. nobody saw anything coming. But you, you put, so one of the big goals for 2020 was to finally get my personal training qualifications. This is something I didn't realize. I've tried once before, but work schedule. And to be honest, just general life is that when you say general life, you just mean it can be bothered. I love it. I uh, got in the, got, got in the way. I love it. So general life got in the way. That, that, that means Netflix. 
<laughs> quite, <laughs> quite the way. It's a night out. Yeah. <laughs> However, this time I'm determined to succeed. I'm so passionate about health and fitness, and I'm a huge uh, advocate for healthy body leading to a healthy mind. Most days I'm not training in pursuit of a specific aesthetic. I'm training for me, for my mental health, my well-being, and a sense of catharsis it brings, which is very true. A lot of people think it's just for weight loss. But are you still pursuing your personal training goals oh god this is one of the things that i mean obviously everyone's struggling with lockdown for various different reasons but i think this huge pause in the world this is one of the hardest things for me to bear aside from not seeing my family and everything and my friends and the general uncertainty we had to press pause on our personal training qualifications jason yeah we did level two so if you need me to take say a spin class oh I, you can do that at gcis can you can you, can you do it yeah. can you do oh, yeah. well don't, don't say that what were you like <laughs> listen don't say that because listen i'm the kind of person you know when people often say oh we'll have to meet up we'll have to go for dinner i say or oh, you have to fly over and come on holiday with me i say to people don't say that to me because i'm the person that will say yes don't don't i will actually do it i don't hold you to it so, so, so you'll come to Juicy Oasis and I'll say, right, there's a class book with Vicky Madison uh, because she promised to do it. And you'll go, oh, no. I'll do it on day two of detox as well so you feel really bad. So, oh, my. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah we're good. We're good. So I look forward to that. But I mean, something you want to pursue, right? Absolutely. So level two is in the bag. Me and me fella are super pleased with herself. Managed to do that. And like the second part, which is level three, it's just had to take a bit of a back seat. But yeah, so we'll be starting as soon as uh, normal programming normal, was. Normal, yeah, whenever yeah. normal. I mean, because I, but you haven't kept quiet. You haven't, you haven't really kept quiet during lockdown either, <laughs> which is, you know, and, you, and, you, and you're still keeping busy. I mean, you started your own podcast, which I, yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't aware of. And I love the concept of it. It's called The Secret Two. We're literally having the conversation before we started recording. So I, <laughs> I, I know very little um, other than the secret two. And you were saying, right, the secret two, and one of the examples you gave was, I think, um, uh, a secret to a successful relationship during lockdown. That's right. Yeah. Now, I'll tell, yeah. I, I t- well, if you've got the secret to that, then I think you should literally get a Nobel <laughs> Peace Prize. So give us some of the subjects that you've spoke to people about at the moment on your podcast. Secret to... Oh, so it's, it's super new. So like, don't, it's just it's forming it's not like yours yours is really professional and established really not, though, is it? it's really not though is it it's really not i haven't done anything professional in my life vicky <laughs> well it's really good i love your podcast but no this one's just we're babies we're just starting out so it's yeah vicky patterson the secret too and every week we have a different guest and they can tell us their secret to whatever they're passionate about really um or whatever fits their situation so we had jamie lang and his lovely girlfriend sophie and they talked about the secret to surviving love in lockdown We've had Giovanna Fletcher talking about surviving lockdown with little ones because she's obviously got. I was going to say she's a got brood. A, a brood. She's got mm. an, a huge brood. Woo Just, gremlins everywhere, Jason. They're all. Do you, know, do you know what though? He comes across, and I don't. I've met Tom a couple of times. Don't know him that well. Uh, I know Giovanna again, but not overly well. But one thing that comes across, and I'm and I'm sure he is genuinely the Instagram version of himself. Oh yeah. But you know, I grew up without a father, and just didn't know my dad at all. But you know, if if you could ever wish oh. for a for a dad, <laughs> yeah. like I would think, I would have loved Tom to have been my dad. You know, when you just think, like, because <laughs> like you just see him all the time, and you can't fake it this long. There's no way he's faking any of this. I mean, and of course, Giovanni's a phenomenal mother. They both bring different things to the table. So, so surviving lockdown with three kids, homeschooling. This, I bet that I'm going to listen to that episode. That's for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, that's exactly one of the questions I asked us straight away. I was like, Tom just looks like such a peach to live with, is he? <laughs> and she's like, Oh yeah, he's great. I think it's just nice to know, and this is the sort of beauty behind the podcast and why I want to do it like it's just nice to know that other people are going through the same thing as you and I don't want anyone to feel any more alone than they probably already do in isolation so yeah we're just we're making people feel connected even when yeah we're but but you know what I think it's funny because lockdown is starting to lift obviously there's going to be a new normal whatever that ends up being but I think what's what people are getting from it the reflection that that they're having from lockdown and and again this is not undermining the the horribleness that has come around, not only the people that have clearly lost their lives because of the disease itself, but also the problems that lockdown itself would have caused at the same time, because there's huge amounts. So we can only do what we can do to try and connect and try and gain something as small as it is from it. And a lot of people are having kind of moments of, of, of reflection where they say, do you know, I'm going to take some gratitude out of this. Are there, are there any particular epiphanies or, or lessons that you've learned from lockdown that, or things that you feel differently about now than perhaps you didn't do beforehand has pausing helped you yeah oh 110 percent like i am um, 
I've learned a lot about myself in lockdown um, and I really don't want to be one of these like self-righteous wankers and I don't want everyone to think I'm that person. I'm not. I just think when you've been living your life so at such a fast pace, which we're all guilty of at one time or another, constantly just put pushing for that next achievement or saving for that next holiday or that next milestone within your relationship, whatever it is you're constantly working towards on that hamster wheel of life, like we're not actually taking stock of our lives. We're not stopping to take a moment to realise, oh, we've actually got what we used to wish for years ago now. Or we're not actually saying like, I'm actually in such a privileged position, like I'm really grateful. Or we're not, we're not just being appreciative. We're going too fast. And I'm so guilty of that, Jason. I'm so guilty of just going a million miles an hour and never once stopping to to be grateful, to smell the roses. And the only time I probably ever do take me foot off the gas is at is at Juicy Oasis. And I think although the circumstances haven't been great and I share all your sentiments about what a horrible situation this must have been for everybody, but that is a good thing to have come out of this for me. I am learning to slow down. Which and, do you th- and do you think though, anybody who's um, doing what we, not only just what we do, but anybody who's in business for themselves, anybody who's got that, and I hate the word entrepreneur, it's a silly word, but you know, that kind of, or that kind of gusto, if you will, the kind of gusto to kind of get up and try and make something of their lives in some way. They're looking at things, okay, here, here's, the, here's the board game, what can I do? Do you think we'll be able to do this moving forward or do you think it'd be like a bad car crash in the sense that when you go past a bad car crash, you inevitably slow down because yeah. you become very conscious of your own driving. But as soon as it's out your rearview mirror, you speed up again. And I kind of know as soon as this is over, it's like, and, it, and it's trying to learn from that. So do you think you, you will be able to take a few hours a day to yeah. actually turn your phone off and and and... But that's the thing, isn't it? The phone yeah. is now the new cigarette. And honestly, like, I'm listening to you talk there and, like, my cogs are turning because, for starters, that's a great analogy. Technically, like, I am worried, especially, like you say, there's a, there's a change. Like, we're, we're moving from one version of lockdown into another slightly more relaxed version and things are starting to feel more normal. And I am worried. I am worrying that despite all my best intentions, when life picks up and I'm able to be really busy again, I'll just fall back into old habits because yeah. it's what I've known for 31 years. Is there yeah. any way that you could, like, uh, I mean, this would be the advice I'm giving to myself as well as you at the same time, <laughs> but, but where you literally have a couple of hours every day, you just go, look, I'm allocating an hour in the morning. It's only if you have to get up an hour earlier, where you literally turn the phone off. Me and my Katie now, we go out and we leave our phones. Now we haven't done that before. We've never done that. And yeah. we do that. And so we can be present with our little son. And for once, like, oh my God, we're, we're actually present here because we all crave connection. Everybody craves connection, right? That's why phones are addictive because you pick them up and you constantly are looking, did somebody like the post? Did somebody didn't like the post? Which is it? Yeah. And, and, and does somebody not like your post? Which, I mean, Vicky, you can have 23,000 people like your post, but if, if you get one bad comment, so is there any way that you can just go, you know, for a couple of hours, for, just for mental health more than anything else, is there any lessons we can all have? Just say, look, one or two hours a day, what do you think? So, I mean, obviously, like, you're exactly right. I think the our obsession and addiction with our phones and social media and everything is a huge problem in society. Like I am so afflicted myself. And over the last six months or so, I've been working with a life coach, Jason, and he teaches me two things about when this, well, he's trying to teach us about when this is all over. And the first one um, relates to, to, again, to your phone and having that peace of mind. So in the morning, the first thing I used to do was roll over and grab my phone and I wanted to check social media. Like you say, I want to know who liked me picture, who hadn't. I want to see what everyone else was saying and doing. And before I'd had a chance to set my tone for the day, to build my castle walls, to prepare myself mentally and physically for whatever knocks that day would hold, I had already opened myself up to a world of criticism through social media. Yeah. And he says, take that hour. He calls it power hour. Okay. It sounds like it's what you and Katie have been doing, practicing yourselves, even without this advice. But it's just take some time for yourself in the morning. First thing, go for a walk, do meditation, practice yoga, have a nice breakfast, like read a book, whatever it is that relaxes you, whatever allows you to build your castle wall. Well, when you, when you say that, you mean, you mean you mean a green juice, obviously. I mean, I know what you're saying. But when you say breakfast, I mean, I mean, that's, I mean like, you mean a turbocharged smoothie. I mean, I know exactly what you mean. You're telling green goddess in your crap of way I did. But it, do you know what's interesting to observe as well? You are one of the very few, and, and there, there are 
tiny, tiny handful that have managed to achieve what you've achieved. There are very few. In fact, I can't really, know, I can name them in the music world, but I, I find it very difficult to name them in the reality TV world. So you starred in Geordie Shore. For those of you who have never seen Geordie Shore, please don't. Not fair. <laughs> no, I'm really, really joking. Um, it was on MTV. And I know through talking to you at, at Juicy Oasis and stuff, you did some things on that that you regretted in particular because of, of you know, yeah. just your relationship with your mom. You're so close and you felt ashamed by some of it, but you learned so many lessons through it. And as you go on and you, you did some other reality TV shows, but you've done the transition. I just genuinely haven't seen to become a panelist, for example, on Loose Women <laughs> and, but to genuinely be a voice to have nearly 5 million people on Instagram, not because you're wearing a particular bra that day, but because actually <laughs> they are, li no, but they, I mean, you know, a lot of people got 10 million just because, you know, because they're wearing a bra, you know, that's it. <laughs> They've got, but actually you show both sides to yourself. You are, it's been overused, but, but you're real. You've made that transition over where, where actually you are now being a voice for some of the young teenage girls that potentially might be obsessed with their body or obsessed with this. I feel you're being a voice of reason in amongst all of that, which is good to see. And I think that's why you have uh, the following that you do. It was there a turning point where you felt that actually you were starting to be taken a little bit more seriously than just the Geordie Shore girl. Was there any was there any defining moment or do you think it just happened gradually? So obviously leaving Geordie Shore was like a big leap of faith for me. Everyone told me like, you're from Geordie Shore, like no one's going to take you seriously. There's not going to be anything else for you out there. So, but I knew, I knew I had to prove to myself that I was more than that, that there was a different side to me. So I left and luckily for me, that it wasn't long before I got the jungle. And I think that was a, a huge step into taking me into a space where I actually felt comfortable um, where I could use my platform to, to inspire and to do good things um, and to take me away from that old image and I will always be eternally grateful to ITV and that show for allowing me to change people's perceptions of me. Well, um, because you can't act for three weeks, is what they say. That's why. Not like, when you're hungry, Jay. No, no, not but like no, <laughs> but like places like the Big Brother House, people can put on a, a persona for a certain length of time, yeah. but you can only do it for a certain length of time, and they know <laughs> that three weeks is an impossibility. It just isn't. No one's that good an actor. Well, you probably are, but but the, but you but you can't constantly act, especially like you said, when you're that hungry. And I think you're right. That was the defining moment because people then warmed to you, didn't they? And it's funny how people hold certain people on a pedestal. It's a funny thing really, when they yeah. do that. But now there's, you connect with people that want to connect with you, which is the good thing about the phones and social media. So it's a funny thing, really. It, I think, yeah, social media is bittersweet, isn't it? Like it's allowed us to feel super close to a, like the whole world and it can be used to inspire and motivate and spread positivity. And exactly like you say, let people know they're not alone, but sometimes it, it, it does have a downside. And I, I think we just have to, do our best to use our platforms to, sh to spread well, positive. Well, talk, well talk, talking about spreading love, right, mm. on social media, right, came as a surprise to me. Now, when I did the uh, interview with Katie Piper, funnily enough, Piers Morgan came up, right? So we started right. talking about... Oh, Piers, no. saying, So we started talking about <laughs> Piers Morgan, right? So we, she was saying that she likes Piers Morgan. I said, well, funny enough, I said, so... So do I. I said, but not, that doesn't mean I like everything he does, which gets mm. often misconstrued or this, that, and the other. But now, of course, during lockdown, that view has slightly changed the mind because I, I, I've never seen anybody more divisive. I, and I got blocked by him as well. So that was interesting. No, uh, what did you I've do? I have never been blocked by anybody ever. And I got Jason. blocked by Piers. I didn't do anything. I asked him a reasonable question. Genuine. I'm never aggressive to anybody. I'm never mm. swearing. I'm never ever at all. So I, it comes a real shock to me that when he got challenged about an opinion. That's all it was, just challenged by it. Mm -hmm. the immediately, the, his immediate resort was to block. And I just thought, oh, at least Piers Morgan noticed me. Now, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> so, so that's just the way it is. But I know that because I've got a little note where it just says, Vicky Patterson is obsessed with Piers Morgan. Is this, <laughs> that cut, is that, wh where has this rumour come from? Oh my God. So I did, I did a fabulous magazine cover throughout lockdown. And it was... It was, it was a lovely piece. It was all about the podcast, my isolation care packages. But they sort of said, like, ask me what, I, what my take on everything was. I just like that he's putting people on the spot. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think so, certain people who aren't being held accountable need to be, and he's doing a good job of that. He said, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention at the start of the podcast, forgot to mention it's politics and religion free. 
I would love to say so much more, but I can't. You see, I would, we could have our, we could have our own political debate that would probably last for about an hour, and then I would probably lose half of my followers. So I will. So I will Let's keep it clean, Jess. Because you remember, this is most people feel like this, and what, what I mean by that, feel like you're allowed to have any opinion that you like. You're allowed to have free speech, providing that they agree with you. <laughs> and, and, if, and if they don't, then, then you're not allowed to. That's just how it works. It's a very strange concept. He says something, doesn't he? He says like, I hate this culture where people say, oh, you can't say that anymore. He's like, you can say that. Oh, you it's ridiculous. Listen, I've want. got a thing. That, uh, f- offense is so ridiculous because offense can only be taken. It can never be given. It's an absolute 100% personal choice to take offense. And, and, like and we're all offended by different things. Some people are offended by boy bands. So you can't just <laughs> ban boy bands because they're offended by boy bands. I happen to love boy bands, but that's a personal choice. Um, but there you go. I think they're great. I don't care. I don't care anymore. I used to think, oh, I better not tell people I like boy bands. I freaking love boy bands. Right, Jason, then top question. Take that or boys on. Look, when I'm on your podcast, maybe I'm not answering any questions. <laughs> No, you killed Joe. Of course, it's take that, take <laughs> yeah. that, boys. So they're not in. They're not even in the same league. <laughs> I can't. I mean, that's. I mean, if you if you had something else, weird, if you. I mean, boy bands. Yes. Anyway, we could talk about boy bands forever. I still think one <laughs> of the best. Five look, five colors in your in in her hair. Five colors in her hair by McFly. So one of the best tracks ever. That's all I'm saying, okay. right? That's just the way, you know, the little <laughs> bass riff three quarters of the way through. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about this. Yeah, I, listen, 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 I know I am. I love it. Anyway, when I do spinning, it's mainly to boy bands. Weird, boy bands and Nirvana, just to show I've got an That's eclectic mix. Such a juxtaposition. <laughs> do you know what? I never thought in a podcast with Vicky Patterson, I don't know why, that I'd hear the term juxtaposition. But I... But, but I have, and it's a great terminology. I think I only heard it for the first time about three months ago, and I've been using it every week since. <laughs> every day for school day, Jess. Because I, I have never... Listen, one thing I want to touch on, we're nearly finished, so I've got to touch on a couple more bits, okay? Oh, um, my God, this has flown. It flies. It just goes nowhere, doesn't it? So I read in... Well, actually, I, I'm, I'm lying that I read this in Closer online in 2019. I didn't. No. Okay. <laughs> It's just written on a piece of paper down for me. Okay, so I'm really... I'll let you <laughs> was reportedly diagnosed, this is you, you were reportedly diagnosed, with a rare nocturnal sleep-related eating disorder, oh. which was NS red, that caused us to eat in the middle of the night and forget that she's done so. Is oh. this going in the bollocks book? This is going straight in the bollocks book. <laughs> and I blame the Daily Mail for this. Yeah, okay, fair enough, yeah. Well, closer online, so they're all the same. Up from there. I did a post, honestly, where I was like, I, I, I just was having a bit of a bad day, and I was like, I've woke up, and I've realised I've ate Doritos through the night again, which I can't remember. And obviously, like, some nights oh. I just wander downstairs when I get snacky. That's all it is. Like, there's no... Um, like I'm really sorry for anyone who does suffer from this as a serious affliction, but it's not. Sometimes I'm just a greedy sleeper. Well, That's do you know what? The one is. listen, the the very, 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 very few people on planet Earth that do suffer from this. Uh, I'm with you. I feel sorry for them. <laughs> However, after listening to this, there'll be a lot of people going, "I didn't know that was a condition." No. Hang on a hang on a second. <laughs> I've got NS yeah. red. Yeah. There'll be a lot of people self-diagnosing just because they like midnight snacks. That'll be it. They'll be going down. And then what they'll wake up in the morning, they'll go, and they'll look in the freezer the next day and go, I can't remember eating that. So therefore I've got the same thing as Vicky Parson. <laughs> I've got an S red. Already I know, listen, by the way, already I know underneath the podcast comments on people who give me going, by the way, my sister suffers with an S red. And do you know how much she said look, it's called humor, okay? Just before we go any further, it's called humor. It's all good. Right? Honestly, you can please some of the people, some of the time, yada yada yada. Oh, I see you did it. See, I'm just reading stuff for the first time. It's why I didn't know you did a DVD. Seven days to be slim on a DVD and 2013. Little workout. Yeah, but so fitness has really been part. I mean, honestly, this has genuinely been a passion for yours for a long, long time. I am okay. going to seek out that DVD. Oh, there's so much gold spandex, JF. You'll love it. I'm going to love it. I, right do you know the, I don't have a DVD player. <laughs> no, nobody does anymore. I think yeah. mine was one of the last ones that slipped through the net before the fall of the DVD. Yeah, they're going to regret that though. Do you know what? Because the minute we don't have Wi-Fi and it all goes wrong, then we're going to go, man, I wish I had DVD CDs. I'd stock up on them now. That's what I would do. <laughs> do you tell them there's going to be a comeback? <laughs> well, I think, I think there will. But there's been a comeback with vinyl. There's been a comeback with literally cassette tape. Yeah. 
cassette tapes have made a comeback. I so now having a, a, a lot of, I- yeah, but not as much as having an iPod, eh? Now, <laughs> Nah. You know, as I look at you now, I can see my vinyl record player uh, as we're talking now, and I can see my vinyl records. Have I ever used them? No, I've got Sonus. Now, but they look good. They look they? great. Listen, you we do cool. it. Of course. <laughs> Listen, why do we buy cookbooks, right? It's just so that we've got Jamie, Nigella, and Gordon on our shelf. <laughs> That's it. Do you own any cookbooks? This is a really weird fact. I was just like, I was on my podcast this morning and then had to come over to do yours and they're like oh my god will jason do yours i was like absolutely and the sound technician just went mother's got his book <laughs> really <laughs> i must make a note to tell jason That's, yeah because i wondered who got it i saw that one person had bought it <laughs> so, I, so I, oh you got the blend me so uh, actually, i'm watching vicky on the uh, video now she's just holding up super blend me Anyway, I'm not on, you can talk about that on your podcast, not on mine. Oh, and you got the cookbook, Super Fast Food. I'm a fan. Oh, you see, I've only done one cookbook, as in food cookbook, and I will never do another one, which I'll explain why on your podcast. <laughs> but there you go, because no one knows why. They keep asking, and I've never mentioned it, but I will mention it for the first time on your podcast, why yes. I will never do another food book ever Again, making a mental note and holding making, you making to that. Making a mental note of that, but no, but I, I'm guilty like most people. So I've got the, I've got the Jamie. Obviously, he's one of the best selling, or the best selling cookbook ever. And you know, he brings them out very cleverly just in September, and everybody buys them for Christmas. And let me ask you a question, genuine truth head on: Have you ever bought a Jamie and Igella or a Gordon book, uh-huh. right? Because it just happened to be in the shop, and you had to get a Christmas present for somebody. <laughs> be honest um absolutely i must have i must have at some point yeah that'll definitely. do that'll do it's like product it's li- literally there in the aisle yeah and you're like well I'll, I'll have that i'll just pick that up could be anybody doesn't matter but you're just picking it up and the person that you bought it for would have made an average by the way this is true of four recipes out of any cookbook over the years really? the average person makes four in the uk the uk also little stat for you buys twice as many cookbooks as any other country in the world but also buys twice as many takeaways no yeah there's a little little factoid for you and we also we use things like bake off as our kind of visual food porn but we don't uh, you know so we watch cooking shows but very rarely do we do we do we, do we make food at, at our home because i just want to say look before we we end this anyway no doubt hopefully when we're in a studio together in about six months and we have part two of the podcast because this Yay! is this is very <laughs> locked down kind of friendly but you know i have genuinely been looking and, and again it's a funny one with lockdown because i wrote a book called create magic and in the second chapter it's the joey tribbiani rule which means <laughs> uh, which is the definition is there's no such thing as a selfless good deed because there isn't obviously that doesn't mean not to do them though <laughs> and the point is, is, is that when people are clapping for carers at eight o'clock on a Thursday night, and you know, some people have been hammered for doing that. And you're like, well, and they're going, oh, look at you or look at me clapping for, the, you know, and they're doing all that. But actually, so what? We're, we're all doing it. And equally, like, you know, you were doing some uh, packages for the elderly, you and your fella. I mean, amazing work that you were doing there for Age UK and yeah. set, uh, setting up a crowdfunding page and doing all that. And most people are positive about anything positive that anybody was trying to do. Now, of course, the reason why we do it and know that, because it makes you feel good, right? Yeah, exactly. makes you feel good. That's why we do it. It makes us feel good. So we can either try and make ourselves feel good by doing something negative on Twitter. I've, I've mm-hmm. gone off Twitter because Twitter's too evil. So I've gone off Twitter. Yeah. So yeah. Twitter. Yeah. Well, Twitter's just an evil place, and yeah. Instagram's quite nice. So yeah. that's the way You've I look at it. You've got to protect your mental health, Jason. Man, oh, you've got to put yourself first sometimes. Honestly, you've just got to. It's just how it is, isn't it? Well, look. I hope when this all lifts and hopefully that the air corridor opens up. I'm hoping that uh, one of the first places that you jump on a plane to, my lovely, is back to Juicy Oasis, your second home. I'd love to see you back out there. I um, will. Honestly, you, I missed you so much. Just when I heard your little voice the other day, I was so happy. You're you just You and your lovely mother as well, person. honestly. Do you know what? I'm going to say this, and I know I don't care, right? Because you'll probably be embarrassed by it. But look, I always say, you always know somebody's true intentions and who they really are when they're not watching, right? This is what, how I really feel about people. And there was one, one of the reasons why not only have I get kept in contact with you over the years, but why I genuinely talk wax lyrical and anybody saying, oh, that's a Geordie Shaw girl. And I genuinely stick up for you every time for, for a good reason. And it's because we were all having soup at Juicy Oasis and there's all the bowls. And I know I mentioned this before, but it said so much about a person. 
that, that when they, they don't know anybody's watching. And every night, it wasn't even one night, and I watched over a few days, every time Soup had finished, you went over to other people's tables, you were collecting their bowls, you were taking them to the inside the kitchen. You even at one point went, it knocked on the kitchen doors or anything else you could do to help, like you were going to wash <laughs> up and you were going to do this. <laughs> I could see this happening every day. I could see around the pool where you just tidy stuff up. I could see you just straightening cushions. I could see you doing this. <laughs> and, and I could just go, do you know what though? But this is somebody's default. And I say to people before they, they, they listen to podcasts and, and if people read the text that I put before you listen to this podcast, you, you'll see what I've written as well. So, so hopefully that's one of the reasons why you decided to listen. I did this with Tommy Mallet because Tommy Mallet was of Towie fame. Mm. But he's also one of the ones that's done the transition very rarely. But he's so, and people go, oh, that Towie guy. And you go, don't dismiss people based on the television show they did. And I've learned not to do that. So I just wanted to end with people knowing that the real Vicky Patterson, your, your, your heart is as huge as it possibly gets. It really is. You care so much about other human beings and you really care about anything that anybody puts that's kind of negative or anything. He's just trying to have a go. That's all you're doing. You're trying to, everybody's just trying to have a go in this board game of life. That's all you're trying to do. That's all you're trying to do. So thank you so much for taking the time to be on. I really appreciate it as well. And and for sharing this really good. And I can't wait to be on, on your podcast, Vicky Patterson, which is the secret to that's correct the secret, we'll be having you on soon Jason I can't the secret wait. too yes that'd be interesting well there's no more to say everybody it is of course share this with as many people as you possibly can so people can get to know the real Vicky Pat. it is of course the one the only it is Vicky Pat. and everybody come on that's all you <laughs> <everybody. laughs>